To demonstrate the usage of the context package in Go, I implemented a simple web server. If the server receives a request, first, the user ID is parsed from the URL parameters. After that, another server will be called and the result of the call will be printed out. The actual server that will be called will depend on the ID of the user. Let's imagine user IDs lower than 100 are stored on an old server that is relatively slow, while higher IDs are stored on a faster server. In order to mimic this behavior, I'm using two functions, one for the slow and one for the fast server call. Both functions will wait a random number of milliseconds and return that number as an integer, while a call to the simulated slow server will take up to 1000 milliseconds. A call to the faster server will only take up to 200 milliseconds. I use the terminal in the lower right part of the screen to start the server. In the lower left part of the screen, I'm going to issue requests to the local server on port 8080. I'm using curl, which is a very popular tool for issuing simple requests from the terminal. As you can see, requests with IDs lower than 100 are relatively slow while requests with higher IDs are, on average, considerably faster. We will use this later. Since I heard that using the context package is very common and considered a good practice in Go, I will try to use it here. The context is like a container and provides a way to pass requests, scoped values or signals across different parts of your application. First, I am creating a context with values. This function expects three arguments. The second and the third argument are the key and the value that I want to store inside the context. Here, the request scope user ID key and value. The first argument is the parent context. Here, it's the background context, which is an empty default context that is usually the starting point for creating a new context. The returned context is usually passed down the call stack of your application as the first argument of a function, so the downstream functions can use its signals or request scope values. So, I'm replacing the user ID function parameter. Since context values can be of any type, I have to make a type assertion after retrieving the value from the context. I know that the user ID will be an integer. So I'm skipping error handling in this example. By the way, whether to use the values feature of the context package is somewhat controversial within the Go community. Some people like the feature, some don't. I recommend trying it out and deciding for yourself if it improves your code. In any case, you can see that the program works like before. Maybe, if the application grows much larger and one keeps passing the context down the call stack, it will come in handy after all. Another feature of the context package is the with cancel function. It helps to manage the cancellation of Go routines or processes. It will take the parent context and return a copy of the given context together with a cancel function. The context should always be canceled. So I'm ensuring that the, the cancel function will be called in any case by deferring it to the end of the handler function. In order to demonstrate the usage of the cancel function, I'm altering my code a little bit. Since context cancellation is most useful in concurrent programming, I'm creating an anonymous Go routine that will write the result of the remote server call to a result channel. If the context is cancelled, an underlying channel of the context will be closed. As you know, if a channel is closed, it will immediately send a zero value to the channel. That's the actual cancellation signal. Therefore, if one reads from this channel, one can determine if the context is closed. Said channel will be returned by the done function of the context. As you can see, I'm using a select statement to either read the cancellation signal from the channel that is returned by the done function of the context, or to read the result of the remote server call from the result channel. The select statement will block until one channel contains a message and will proceed with the respective action. 
If the context is cancelled, I will print the error message of the context. The context error will not be nil if the context was cancelled. If you thought that you could simply check that the error of the context was not nil in order to determine if the context was cancelled, you'd be right. However, in this example, I want to demonstrate the usage of the context package in a concurrent program. Therefore, I'm going to use the signal from the done function. Maybe, rewriting the program with only checking for the error of the context could be a nice exercise. Just to demonstrate the usage of the cancel function, I'm going to cancel the context if the ID of the user is 4. In this case, the context will immediately be cancelled and when the select statement will be evaluated, the signal from the done channel will already be present. Therefore, the context cancellation error will be printed. So, let's try this. As you can see, the program behaves as before. But if the user ID is 4, the context will immediately be cancelled. Next, I'm going to change the with cancel function to the with timeout function in order to demonstrate the next feature of the context package. Like before, this function will return a copy of the given context together with a cancel function. However, the difference is that one can pass a duration as the second argument to the function. This is the timeout duration. If the time is up, the context will time out automatically. Therefore, the done channel will immediately receive a signal. I have chosen a timeout duration of 500 milliseconds because for the slow server with IDs below 100, there is a high chance that there will be a timeout. That is, the context will time out and we can see a corresponding error message. Context deadline exceeded. However, the fast server, for higher IDs, takes up to a maximum of 200 milliseconds to respond. Therefore, it works every time and we can see the result of the remote server call. There is another function in the context package. The with deadline function works very similar to the with timeout function. However, Instead of a duration, the with deadline function expects a struct of type time as a second parameter. In order to get similar results as before, I'm using the now function of the time package to get the current time. I'm adding 400 milliseconds to it. As you can see, for higher IDs or the fast server, we always get a result. This is because the server responds before the deadline is exceeded. For the slow server, the context will exceed the deadline almost every time. To sum this up, in this tutorial, you learn that the context package is very common and useful for handling cancellation or timeout signals in your application. Also, it may be useful for carrying around request scoped values. Please consider liking the video or subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed the video.